Welcome to the Nia Jotron Podcast. My name is Isaac Kamins. This is a bi-weekly podcast where my friend Jess O'Brien and I discuss internal martial arts, qigong, and meditation. This week we continue our discussion on the Yang family of Tai Chi. We talk about the second son of Yang Luchan, uh, Yang Jianho, who is Yang Cheng Fu's father. Uh, a couple of stories about his life. Uh, then we get into the Tai Chi classic of um, if there's up, there's down. If there's left, there's right. And if there's forward, there's back. One of the more uh, well-known phrases from the Tai Chi classics. Uh, and in this week's Patreon, we continue our look at Bai Wa's Gong system. And we do a little bit of a side uh, dive into uh, Lu Dong Bin's stories about him. So, hope you enjoy it. Hope you check out the Patreon. Thanks for all your support. Thanks for listening, and take care of yourselves. Welcome to the Nage Trend Podcast with Isaac and Jess. In today's episode, we're going to continue our look at the Yang style of Tai Chi and take a look at the son of the founder of the style, uh, Yang Jianho. And we'll be looking at this from the Combat Techniques of Taiji Xingyi and Bagua by Lu Sheng Li. Um, so it says here, Yang Jianho, he's born in 1839. So about the same age, a couple years younger than his older brother. And But he lives past the Boxer Rebellion to 1917. Um, that's right around some very important happenings in China. That's kind of the establishment of the Republic and the overthrow of the Qing Dynasty is happening right around there. So yeah, that's an interesting lifespan. He, he survives to see the Republic the republic of china but most of his life's in the 1800s young john ho was a much kinder man than his brother as a youngster he did not especially like martial arts but his father urged him very strongly to study taiji chun and eventually he complied his gung fu became good although not better than young bon ho he was however happy to help his father teach taiji chun and he went on to teach many of his own students who benefited from his goodness as well as his knowledge some of his students became famous taiji masters as did his sons. Um, so Yang Jianho is sort of the nice guy of the two brothers, the two two young brothers. He's kind of the friendly one. Right. The young Banho was sort of the mean and harsh, but the, powerful. The nice younger brother. Kind the nicer of. younger brother, sort of the, the cooler dude. Uh, I have one story from Chen Wei Ming's book, Taiji Sword, translated by Barbara Davis. So she, in this, he writes, uh, when Yang Jiang Ho became the martial arts teacher of the Divine Military Battalion, he was already 70 years old. One day when Yang was returning home, a rude fellow unexpectedly came at him with a stick and hit him from behind. Yang Jiang Ho suddenly turned his body and met the stick with his hand. He gave the rude man a slight push, throwing him a distance. Jiang Ho had another ability. He could make a swallow stay in the palm of his hand. The bird was not able to fly away as John Ho was able to listen to the jin of its claws. He followed it by relaxing his hand downward. The swallow's feet couldn't get any strength or position, and thus the bird was not able to fly away. So that's a famous Taiji story that you hear a lot about the sensitivity skill. Right. Well, that's where the term, uh, the name grasping the sparrow's tail comes from, mm. right? Is the idea that you, you're so soft that the sparrow can't jump off your hand <laughs> so young john ho doesn't seem to be as much information about him as his his sort of rough and fighting ready uh older brother but he lives longer and he really contributes more to tai chi i think because he teaches more i found a biography of him on the yang family tai chi website young john ho was nicknamed the third son until his later years when he was referred to as just old man okay so born in 1842 he started studying tai chi at a young age um under the strict requirements he would practice hard all day however he could not endure it any longer he tried several times to run away uh finally he became a man of great talent and uh so let's see here now what's interesting here it says young Ho took his father's old frame and revised it into the medium frame he also mastered the saber spear sword and other weapons his sword skill was renowned for combining softness and hardness and it also says john ho even mastered using pellets he would hold it three or four in his hand at one time, and when thrown simultaneously, each would strike a different bird in flight. He earned the fame of not wasting one pellet when thrown. 
So he's got to think about birds. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it's interesting. He revised his father. You know, Young Luchan had the original old frame. He revised into the medium frame. And I found a little bit more of that. It talks over here on the Plum Pub website. Um, Young Jian Ho was the third son of Young Luchan. He revised his father's old frame form into the medium frame, or Zhang Jia. This 85 movement form retains many of the internal circles and power issuing that was removed in both the large frame revision of his son, Yang Cheng Fu. Um, so that's interesting. So this, this medium frame had many internal circles and power issuing, but it's not quite the old frame of uh, Yang Luchan. So yeah, that's uh, there's a lot of different frames of Tai Chi I'm starting to see over well, the years. Yeah, I mean, it's it's that's one of the ways you differentiate your style of Yang style Tai Chi from other Yang styles of Yang style Tai Chi because you have uh, different frames, meaning yeah. what that means is that the, the size of the body is expanded right so hmm. um you essentially have large medium and small frames of any martial art right so small is tight and close to your body and you know movements are short and small medium is right somewhere in the middle and then large is you expand things out as far as you can right and um some schools have you know, they'll have a large and a small frame, you know, form, or they'll just have variations from person to person. But, you know, that the, in the Yang family, the way they kind of said, okay, well, this chunk of the family did, we're going to call that the medium frame. Mm -hmm. What this chunk we're going to call the, the large frame. And over here, we're going to call it the small frame. And so, what was the small frame Yang style is what became the Wu style essentially, right? So that's kind of how it like, um, you know, just class gets classified by size essentially. Right, right. The size, extra, you know, you can look at them and see the difference. I was looking at Kumar's book, The Big Book of Tai Chi, and it says, uh, Large frame st style stretch the muscles, make the body more flexible. The The large frame strategy is to focus on outer stretching, getting your hands and feet to extend further and further away from your torso. Just as in a leg split, the lower you go, the more you stretch. Whereas small frame styles focus more on inner stretching, releasing internal organs and ligaments while increasing the space between your vertebrae and within your joints without extending your hands and feet very far away from your torso. This process stretches the muscle by reducing the internal anatomical pulls and involuntary nervous system contractions that prevent the muscles from naturally stretching. So they release effortlessly and uh, elongate. Small frame styles also gradually enable you to become very relaxed and extremely limber. They make it easier to open the body's acupuncture meridians and other deeper internal energy channels. So just to wrap up, uh, Yang Jianho, the son of Yang Luchan here, um, I found another biography here. It says Yang John Ho lived from 1839 to 1917. Yang John Ho possessed a highly developed martial arts skill and was agile in his Taiji form. His Taiji trend was a harmonious blend of hard and soft. He was especially talented at issuing internal energy, Fa Jin. He also had a profound knowledge of the Taiji straight sword, saber, and spear. John Ho's eye body coordination was superb and his movements were very fast. He was once among a crowd of spectators in an opera theater in Beijing watching an actor perform with a sword. The actor suddenly lost control of the weapon and it flew out of his hands in Yang's direction. So quick was Jian Ho's reaction that he not only managed to ward off the sword, but he also caused it to be flung back onto the stage. His character was very warm hearted. Whenever Yang Jian Ho competed and trained with others, he never looked lightheartedly upon anyone. Therefore, he too was never defeated. Unlike his elder brother, Bonho, he was loved and respected by many students because he was a gentle and patient teacher. Um, so I, the couple of things in there, it mentioned he was highly talented at issuing internal energy. So Fa Jin is one of Tai Chi's famous techniques where you shove or push somebody and punch somebody and then with extra force, they go flying. So they both had Fa Jin. It's just Bon Ho liked to do it to hurt people and Jen Ho, it sounded like he would just show people and That's so he, yeah, yeah, that makes that, sense. That's definitely my impression. Is yeah, and <laughs> uh, he he deflected a sword, but also it says he was uh, even though he was nice, he was never defeated. 
Oh, and I think the sword thing, I was going to go back and say, that reminds me of the bird kind of thing. Like, he's he's well known for, like, super fast reactions, kind of, for, like, throwing pebbles at the birds or for he won't let them light off his hand. Well, quick lightness. Is, yeah, you know, yeah. Like that, that's kind of the, I mean, again, that's what everybody's trying to get to, essentially, is just to have that, the, you know, the super light just. Yeah, effortless kind of. Like, it, quick. you know. You're just flicking something out of the way, right? Like, right. And the sword just goes ricocheting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> so so one last thing about young John Ho. Now his his son, he has a couple sons. One of them's Yang Cheng Fu, who we'll talk about a lot in the future, who who is really the guy who spread Tai Chi to the world. Um, but he had another son, and his son is known as Yang Shao Ho. He was famous for his fighting skill. Because his favorite technique was Lu or rolling back. He got the nickname Fei Lu Yang Shao Ho, which means he could beat people with his Lu technique as if they were flies. His fractitious personality, much like his uncle Yang Ban Ho, led him to do just that. He beat even his own students, of whom he soon had only a few. Yang Shao Ho, impoverished in old age, committed suicide. So yeah. he's he's a lot he sounds like he's more like his uncle, uncle Yang Ban Ho. The sort of rough young side. Yeah, I mean, he's often used as sort of the cautionary tale of why you don't want to do too much of the, uh, you know, the hardcore stuff, right? That yeah. you got that part of what you got to learn when you do internal arts is also to have a healthy mind, you know? right? He's always the sort of case study for why you should, you know, temper your mind as well as strengthen everything you know because mm -hmm. you don't want to be i mean the, the the way bruce described it at one point was it's like this was the 1800s equivalent of a handgun right and you right. don't want to hand a, a weapon to somebody who's unstable right right and, and, and that's essentially or give somebody a weapon in this case that right. makes them unstable but right? as you pointed out sometimes those guys are the ones who are best at it even though they might be sure the yeah because they're because it's a, it becomes an obsession right like it but but uh yeah i mean i think that the part of why tai chi did get this reputation of being also about sort of a calm mind a meditative mind is because it did have this they they did notice. Oh, there is a dark side to this yeah, stuff. If you don't, no you know, kind of keep an so eye. Maybe on you it. push. Yeah, maybe you push a little in the other direction. I like how his favorite technique. It isn't Jay shooting out. It's it's Liu rolling back. And he's right, so, yeah, so he's, he's this ruthless fighter, but he uses rolling back as his main technique. Yeah, well, it, it, rollback can be you know snapping somebody's arm off. That's their... what I think of someone who lunges too far. You roll back and put on that arm lock and or just deflect their arm harshly. To break an elbow. Yeah, I mean, but there's also the piece of rollback that's about um absorbing too. So mm. you, you've got this thing of you you have both the yield, you know, yielding physically part of it, but there's also this absorption and like the then the the subsequent expansion that comes after that, right? So people that are really good at rollback, it's like most of their movement is the rollback and then there's just this tiny little hit at the end of it but it's so it's just so concentrated into that one little bone that it's like got all that built up power behind it so it's it's kind of like more storing of energy less shooting it out yeah it's still going to come out it's just not going to come out as of a in as large of a space right it's like putting all your energy into a needle point mm. as opposed to putting it into a cannonball mm -hmm. right one's gonna shoot the thing out in space and you know smash whatever it hits the other one's gonna just be like <laughs> going through a you know any like laser it's, beam kind of yeah, yeah. Just, just not leaving any mark but the thing drops dead right right like, yeah, I just brought up Yang Shaoho because this is the lineage that flows down to Bai Hua uh, through his teacher, Lin Du Yang, Tian Zhao Lin. They, uh, they tap into this sort of harsher side of the Yang family. Right. I mean, that's in their old frame Yang style. Again, the, uh, 
what I was saying about when you want to make your make it known that you're a martial tradition of Tai Chi, you you put yeah, make that little plug, connection. Yeah, those guys into it. Yeah. Into it. So the next section of the Tai Chi Chen classics is the quote, if there is up, there will be down. If there is front, there will be back. And if there is left, there will be right. It seems to speak to the balance of Tai Chi where you're balanced in all directions, right? So he, Baiwa just quickly says, there should be up, down, front, back, left and right in every movement. Now he talks about you must distinguish the inside from the outside in order to understand the requirement. And he brings up the unification of joint coordination um, this idea of joint coordination we've talked about a couple times. Yeah, I mean... What's the phrase again? Pulling silk. So there's reeling silk, right? Is the more common... Right, well, I mean, the, the Chinese for reeling silk or pulling silk isn't the same as the one that you just put here, though. Chuan Bianche. No, but he's he's not using pulling silk, but that's the common phrase. It's what similar you, to what we the, think of as pulling silk. The right actual... Here words he's using is pulling string or coordinated string like string of nine pearls maybe is another one that gets used right that there's a unification of all the parts right so the the coordination of all your joints um is sort of the i think he's just making a phrase out of it essentially he's saying the joint coordination the way uh, we would say the opening and closing. So he's saying right. that the unification of all these parts happens on the inside of your body. Right. But the sort of um, like result of it or the, the external visual of it is going to be on the outside. Right. So right, you're not right, going right. to see, you're not going to see it, but it's going to happen when you move, right? It, it's right. sort of saying that there's this internal connection. <clears throat> and so he says to make that internal connection, use the opening and closing, um, like a balloon expanding or shrinking, it is reflected from all directions. So it's not like one part of yours moves independently. The whole system, this joint, this coordinating of the joints, the Chuen Lianjie has this sense of a balloon squishing and expanding and shrinking at the same time in all directions. Yeah. So again, if you think of it as a, a a thread that goes from your spine to your hand, so that if you're pulling this thread that's going up, right, there has to be something to anchor it so that's going down. Mm. Right? If you're pulling it down, it has to have something to... to anchor it so that it doesn't you know so there, there's always two ends of the string right so you have to be connecting your central channel essentially to your your hand at all times but this connection is going back and forth from your body to your arms and it's going in different directions when you mm -hmm. start moving your body so all of those things are just um to say that when you move, everything stays connected, right? Bruce likes right. the phrase, one part moves, all parts move. One right. part stops, all parts So there's stop. a thread that can that moves all the parts at the same time when you tug on the thread. So he talks about you divide the spine, um, you pull the spine up uh, to the, the top and then down to the tailbone <laughs> is the up and down. Mm -hmm. Um So that's up and down. Then he talks about you divide the two shoulders, two hands, two hips, and two feet. That means if there is a left, there will be a right. And then when he says if you step forward or you kick back, there is a front, there will be a back. So those are the basically the physical movements that reflect this this conceptual idea of the uh, of this joint coordination. Well, it's happening all the time, right? I mean, the mm -hmm. idea is that this isn't see. Otherwise, you'd stumble and fall forward if you didn't have any backward attention and energy. Well, in, in most things, what people do is they have a connected posture when they start, they move, and they have a connected posture when they end. And basically, what's happening in the middle is just a inertia type thing. You're just sort of moving forward until you get to the point where you stop. 
And in between point A and point B, there's not a lot of connection, right? Um, you can think of if you want to move from your back leg to your front leg, mm. you can lunge forward like a fencer. You know, you could just throw your body forward onto that front leg, right? But that isn't how you would do it in Tai Chi because nothing's going backwards when you mm -hmm. do it. If your back foot's coming off the ground when you when you lunge forward and you're not pushing right. and you're not pushing it into the floor to lunge yourself off, then nothing's going back, right? So yep. you always have that thing of and frequently in the movements of the hands, right? You'll you'll also have one going forward and one going back, or one going yeah. up and one going down. Right. One hand isn't limp. The other both hands are extending at the same time. Right. They're always in the side to side thing. I mean, he just kind of lays it out. I mean, it's, you, I could go on on all examples, yeah, but it, but it, <laughs> basically, it's just the idea that, that uh, every action has an equal and opposite reaction, right? So. Your up has a down, your forward has a back, your in has an out, yep. your left Equal has and a opposite, right. exactly. And you just go on in any, you know, thing you can think of. It's got a parallel somewhere. So he ends by saying, uh, um, in terms of unifying everything, he says, for example, if balls are placed next to each other in a pipe, as long as the last one is pushed, all the balls will move, regardless of position. Again, this is about coordinating, you know, yeah. the, 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 the phrase that people like to use to describe this is the string of nine pearls, mm -hmm. right? Like the more, uh, relatable one for a lot of people might be the thing that the little ball clacker that therapists have on their desk, right? You know? The thing where you, you lift one Executive, ball and, yeah. <laughs> and it whacks and it goes and then the one on the other end moves and it comes back and it whacks and right. the other end. So the ones in the middle are essentially not going anywhere, right? And this is right. essentially the principle of Tai Chi that no matter which way you're going, that center is going to be uh, still. All right. Well, I think that's as much as we can say about that. You know, a lot of these classic statements are it's just Tai Chi basics like I guess if, if you've never done it before, maybe you would leave one hand limp while the other one goes. So like this, you've got to just, this concept's been beaten into my head so many times. I just assume that you've heard it a million times before, but that's what the classics are all about. Just finding those key ideas that you got to just have written down. Well, I mean, uh, you kind of, you skipped over that one, the the thing about each act, action having its own process. Okay. What do you think of that? Um, well, the idea is that all these things are happening and they each have their own process, right? The the way of keeping balance. But, mm. um, you know, the how do you perform an external movement with an internal connection, right? Mm. And so this principle of, of threading the needle or string of nine pearls or joints coordinating whatever you want to call it has to do with the you know part of how you make an internal a movement internal right is it has to be done with this um alignment essentially right so if you take the analogy that he uses of the balls on a pipe right that like if the balls aren't on the same pipe they ain't gonna clack into each other right that they have to be the, the the premise for this thing to work is that they're lined up right mm. so so i think what he's saying is that the you know the principle is everything has to have a equal and opposite thing to balance it right the, right the practical app way you do that is by physically lining everything up so that they stay connected internally right mm. and I mean, when I was sort of taught this principle, the thing it was it was usually taught with the movement G because that's the one where you're kind of doing the most forward motion, right? So that the the keeping the connection going backwards is the most difficult in a sense, and you you have to have some sense of the back of your spine being connected to your foot when you do the push forward, and mm -hmm. I, it could be either foot. But you can't just lunge forward and to sort of throw your chest out when you do the push. It doesn't work. So, you know, your spine is essentially the 
the string of pearls that is the most sort of connect you know connects to everything right so when when you doing any kind of external motion the place where this principle gets put into you know sort of into action is mostly inside your spine mm. or with your spine so it's it's the ability to open the back of your spine it's the ability to open the front of your spine it's the ability to open both of them together and close both of them together it's also the ability to open one side and close the other and do all these things that which is a result of what the hand motions are some most of the time right so for example when you're doing something like brush knee right half of your body is going to be closing half of it's going to be opening you're going to have mm. that thing of you know it, but it's but it's not the same half right it's split down the middle so it's crossed over where if you're doing a motion like ward off it's still split right but it's this it's it's parallel right same hand same foot it right, doesn't, right right doesn't cross over so you have that thing of like how these things connect through your body is a big part of what you know you're doing when you move but you always have to keep it connected to that you know that string of pearls down the middle that yeah. as soon as one of those you know, you start waving your spine around, you're not really doing, you can't really do these principles anymore. You right. can do other stuff, but that's sure. not, you know. Yeah, that's a very good point. Like, there's the physical side and there's the internal side. There's the there's the principle and then there's the principle in motion. So the Tai Chi classics are always going back and forth between these two things to try and, like, lay out the playing field that you're working in. Yeah, and I think Bai Wa's, uh thing if you will quote unquote is he's really into the um the connection between if you will the internal chi stuff that you're doing and the external movement right it, like that there is this linkage between what you do with your body and what happens on the inside and all these internal pressures and things like that and so it's 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 really experiential. It's not just theoretical, you know, that there's like you got to make it happen inside of you. You can't just visualize it and think about it. Right. Which I like. Yep. It's got to it's got to work. <laughs> All right. All right. Good talking to you. All right, man. Till Talk next to you time. Soon. Yep, take care. All right, bro. Hey, folks. Uh, thanks for listening. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Just a quick reminder, check out the Instagram for images to go along with the episodes. And if you're not already a subscriber of our Patreon, check out our Patreon for uh, exclusive interviews, uh, bonus episodes, and much, much more. All right. Thanks a lot for listening and take care of yourselves.